Hello Internet, it's me, Brandon Hart, the Eco Struder, and this time we're going to do some thoughts from the heart on the CR6 Max 3D printer. So this is my personal CR6 Max. I unboxed it on another EcoStruder video that you can go back and check out before you jump into this one. But uh, this was a machine that I bought with my own personal money. Uh, it was a Kickstarter campaign that I backed for the CR6 SE and I opted to upgrade it to the CR6 Max. Um, I wanted to check it out and wanted to see how it was before I then decided whether or not we would uh, sell it at HeartSmart Products alongside the Ender 3s and CR 10s and uh, Sir Moon D1s and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about that. First off, yeah, this was a Kickstarter campaign. So um, think about that what you will, but this was a Kickstarter campaign from a large established 3D printing, uh, 3D printer manufacturer, and uh, that has its own unique aspects to it, but we're going to skip past that and just talk about the machine's performance. There are some things I don't love about the CR6 Max, so let's touch on those first and then I'll get to the things I do love. First off, this machine prints great, but it can have quite a bit of stringing um, when you are trying to print parts that have areas where you need a lot of travel moves. Uh, this is always a known issue with Bowden systems and maybe I just didn't quite have my settings dialed in. In fact, I can tell you I did not have my settings dialed in on that one, um, but it is something that is a little bit more predominant on this machine than other Bowden printers that we've tested in the past. That said, the very first thing that it printed was this Moon City 2.0. Uh, so this print was done without any testing, without any calibration. We didn't do a calibration cube or anything whatsoever. Didn't even do the example prints on the SD card. Just jumped straight into doing a very large Moon City print using the supplied PLA uh, filament inside the box, which I usually don't recommend doing because it can it's known to clog a hot end, but we did it anyway. And I think you'd agree that's a pr pretty beautiful print right there. Um, so the stringing is controllable if you get your settings dialed in. A couple other things, it, uh, it has this LED light, which is great, except it's blue for some reason. Um, so it doesn't really help you see what you're printing with. The nozzle on the hot end clogs a bit more than I am used to on most of the other machines. This is a fully redesigned machine from scratch. Uh, Creality did not use a lot of the things that they have done on the Ender 3s, the CR 10s. They all kind of share a lot of the same parts, the same hardware, the same design. This is a fully redesigned from scratch machine from Creality. So the hot end is different. The print head is mounted differently. The extruder is different. It's got a filament detection sensor. Uh, it's got a, uh, a way to sense the bed without a BL touch. It actually uses the print head, the um, hot end mounted to a load cell and it taps the nozzle on the bed to determine the bed location. So all of this is really cool stuff, but that hot end that they redesigned, I, I just, I don't love it. It seems to clog a bit more than I would like it to. And the extruder is maybe a little bit weak and uh, there's a lot of pieces in there too that are hard to get back together if you take it apart, trust me. The other thing I will throw out there is vase mode. This machine has a really cool feature, which is that if you were to yank the power from the machine uh, or your power were to go out, it knows where it was and it can resume from that point when it, you turn it back on again. That's great, except in order to do that, it has to save its location in the G code every time it does something so it knows where to pick up from. That results in these issues on your print, these little dots that are on the print, specifically with very high resolution parts, uh, models that have a lot of, you know, high resolution curves and things like that, um, and specifically in vase mode. So it's a, it's a very small percentage of prints that you might do, but when you do those, you get these dots on your part. 
which could be aesthetically cool, but it's generally not what you're going for. So um, that is a, a something to be aware of. I assume this is something that could be fixed with a firmware upgrade, but that's one of the other cons. They really, they haven't released any new firmware. Uh, the firmware that this thing originally shipped with is the same firmware that you can download on the Creality website now. So there hasn't been any firmware development since the machine was originally released. But if you print a part on this machine without uh, you know, those super high resolution curves and things like that, you can get an absolutely gorgeous printed part. So this is IC3D's recycled PETG right here. And that is a beautiful fractal pyramid, a uh, full one kilogram print, filled up a, a lot of the build volume right there. No warping, nothing, beautiful print. Uh, so you just have to kind of know that high resolution vase mode prints may present you some issues. It would be nice if it had an enclosure. It's a very large machine. Creality sells enclosures, but they don't like make one big enough for this machine. Again, minor issue like most of these things are. Uh, so yeah, just a few things that I am not totally in love with about the CR6 Max, but there's also a lot to love here because there's a lot of printer. The things that I love about this thing. All right, so this thing can print very, very large objects and it can print them very, very well. So obviously this is a huge stepped bin um, and again, this is printed in vase mode, but you don't see those same dots on the part because in this case, it was a relatively low resolution model that didn't have the same problems with, um, you know, needing to get more G code as fast as the system could save its location. So no issues with that. Similarly, here's our Stargate with uh, the base. Um, so these are printed in PLA pretty much filled up the entire 400 millimeter build volume with that base, uh, as well as the Stargate itself that sits into it. Just an absolutely gorgeous print. And, uh, you know, it, it, it does a great job. It prints very big things with very high print quality. And I love that. You do have to get the stringing under control, but that's a slicing setting that you can generally take care of without too much trouble. It's also quite fast and it's also very, very, quiet. This thing runs very smoothly. It's super quiet. Half the time I don't even know it's printing, um, which is just amazing for something as big as this thing is. And you gotta love the full size SD card instead of those tiny little micro SD cards you have to try to uh, find a spot for on your other machines. And all of this is in a $799 machine, at least at the time of filming this video. Um, so you can find it on sale for $799, which is pretty incredible for something with a build volume of 400 by 400 by 400 and print quality like this thing is capable of doing. So do I like it? Yeah, yeah, I sure as heck do. Uh, this thing has really impressed me, honestly, while I've been, while I've been printing with it. We've printed lots of different things. We've tested out lots of different uh, uh, issues that I thought maybe could exist with it. Um, I thought maybe this uh, uh, photoelectric uh, filament detection sensor would have a problem with clear filament. It doesn't. Um, you know, maybe I would swap out the print, the hot end to um, one of the micro Swiss hot ends that they just came out with uh, recently. And, uh, and that gives you an all metal hot end and kind of eliminates some of those nozzle clog issues I said we were having. Uh, maybe you put a Bontech BMG extruder on here, maybe some Capricorn tubing, maybe use the community firmware, but as a stock machine, it's still an excellent performer. Those things would just make it even better. So ultimately, I guess what I'm working up to is, yeah, I decided that we're gonna sell these at Heartsmart Products. So you can find a link to our store in the description below. Um, again, when I started testing this thing, I had not made any kind of decision as to whether we were going to sell these things or not, but I'm impressed enough that we are indeed. So, uh, so that's the final verdict on the CR6 Max 3D printer. Uh, if you have additional questions, if you wanna know more about the machine, anything like that, leave your 
uh, thoughts in the comments below or shoot us an email to ecostruder at heartsmartproducts and I will get back to you. But otherwise, hit the subscribe button, do the little bell thing that gets you notified when we post new videos so you won't mix, miss more of these types of videos in the future. And with that, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.